So I finally ended up getting my hands on an Xbox Series X. And I gotta say, they're not easy to find. It's been a bit of a struggle to get one. But as you guys know, I do have an Xbox Series S and I covered it on the channel when it launched at the end of last year. But one of the things I wanted to talk about in this particular episode is that the Xbox Series X has a DRM problem. The Xbox brand has had a DRM problem for years, but it seemingly gets a pass because it supports backward compatibility in a much more comprehensive way than Sony and the PlayStation 5. But in my experience, the Xbox Series X has a far more heavy-handed DRM measure in place that will absolutely stop you dead in your tracks in almost every situation if you're not connected to Xbox Live and are not able to periodically authenticate your games. The PlayStation 4 C-Bomb issue, which would effectively brick your PS4 once your CMOS battery died and were not able to connect back to the PlayStation Network, made news headlines and rightfully so. But we want to turn our attention to the Xbox, and I want to talk about the various types of content that you can install physically from disc. First, there's the OG Xbox and Xbox 360 discs. Now for these to work, it's common knowledge that you need to be connected online because the disc itself is really just a license to download the game and the emulator, which will run the backward compatibility. For Xbox One physical games, you need to be connected online at least one time during the install to download specific configuration files and game patches. Where it gets interesting is physical smart delivery games. In theory, this should contain both the Xbox One and the Xbox Series S and X versions of the game on the physical disc. But in practice, this is rarely the case. And in my experience, it appears as though it's usually the lowest common denominator. And then we have native Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X games. And these can be installed offline without any issues whatsoever. So let's go ahead and run a few tests. The first thing that I do is disconnect the Xbox Series X from the network. And then let's install Rise of the Tomb Raider, an Xbox One physical game onto our Xbox Series X. This is a 20 gigabyte download. And for this, it needs about 10 minutes to install off disk. As you can see, when I try to launch the game, it simply wants me to connect to the Xbox Live network in order to complete installation. Now we said previously that this is a backward compatible title, therefore it must connect to Xbox Live in order to pull down any game specific configuration or patches. But over on the PlayStation 5, if I do a similar comparison with a game such as The Last of Us Part 2, a PlayStation 4 game that runs under backward compatibility, Launching the game has no such issues, it simply works. And this is the case for the majority of PlayStation 4 back and pat titles running on the PS5. Now let's move on to physical Xbox games that have smart delivery. And this is when there's a combination of both the Xbox One and the Xbox Series S and X versions on the disc. Well, in theory that is. The problem is, in my experience, there is no difference with the Xbox One version, in that attempting to install and launch a game such as Hitman 3, a confirmed smart delivery physical title, the same issue occurs. Now, when I try to launch Hitman 3, as you can see, it says the game isn't ready yet. Go online to finish installing it. If I take a look at the game and its add-ons, you can see I've installed 46 gigabytes onto my Xbox with all the add-ons as well. So what is actually the problem here? Most likely what's happening here is that the disc itself has the lowest common denominator, which is essentially the Xbox One version of the game. And you still need to be connected online to basically access the next gen version or the Series S and Series X version of the game. But as you can see, at this point, we have no way of playing this game, this physical game that we've purchased and installed onto our Xbox without getting back and connected onto Xbox Live. Without a connection to Xbox Live, so far, nothing has worked for us, not a single title. And that is a little more than concerning. But a scenario that does work is native Xbox Series X physical games. In this case, we tested Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, which installed directly off the disc, with no patches and no connectivity to the internet. Generally speaking, this should work for other native Xbox Series X games, but I certainly haven't tested them. The problem, however, is, at least for a short while, is that smart delivery 
is the strong push from Microsoft, and we would need to wait until the Xbox One range of consoles no longer has games developed for it, and that is probably at least another 18 or so months away. There's also other scenarios that I want to talk about. Another test that I performed was my digital download catalog on my Xbox Series X. When I disconnected my Xbox from the network, I was unable to launch games that I had previously purchased. For example, Resident Evil Village, a single player game that I purchased in full, downloaded and I've already beaten, but for some unknown reason, it cannot launch unless it's connected. I tried other games I own such as Dirt 5, and Game Pass titles also had similar issues. Now with Game Pass, I could definitely agree that the title needs periodic network checks in order to make sure that your Game Pass subscription hasn't expired. But for any other game that I've purchased outright, regardless of digital or physical, should be accessible either offline or online, without any exceptions. Microsoft does offer a solution to the offline problem, and that is to set your console that you want to play offline games on as the home console. When I did this, it certainly helped. Village and Dirt 5 both loaded just fine in-game, but the solution is far from perfect. For example, Ori of the Will of the Wisps failed to load as did many other random digital titles that I tried. Resident Evil 2, an Xbox One X enhanced title that I purchased, failed to start, as did many others. The solution is a band-aid at best, and possibly Microsoft actively curates a whitelist of titles that are offline accessible. So you could probably argue that because it's a digital download and not physical, then you should always be connected to the internet in order to authenticate that license over time. And I guess you could say that's true, but let's in comparison take a look and see what happens on the PS5. Now I've got a couple of digital downloads on my PS5 here. Returnal, The Last of Us Part 2, Soulstorm, Far Striker, and a couple of others. Now Returnal is a game that I bought digitally on the PS5. And before we try to launch the game, let's go ahead and take a look at the network and make sure that we are not connected, as you can see. Now, if I go ahead and launch Returnal, in comparison to what we saw on the Xbox, where pretty much nothing was accessible unless we were connected to Xbox Live, over on the PS5, you can see that there is no issues whatsoever starting the game. And in my experience, many PS5 titles, not all of them, because it definitely is specific to the game itself. But for the most part, the games on the PS5, whether they're physical or digital, will have no problem starting up. Now, I'm not talking about the C-bomb issue, because that is definitely an issue, and I'm, I'm not discounting that, but I'm talking about what happens in the now. As you can see, even though it's saying there's a network error, and it does want me to connect online maybe to get access to some accessible features, I can play Returnal just fine. And finally, the Xbox contains additional DRM measures that perhaps is worse than anything that we've covered so far, and that is the initial online setup that requires the console to be connected to Xbox servers to activate. And there is no way around this. You must connect the console online to activate and start using it. Now, why is this a problem? Well, right now it's not, of course, but this approach will render all disks and the digital service useless once the Xbox Live service for the Xbox Series X is inevitably shut down. This means for every unactivated console hardware that's sitting out there in a warehouse, it will become e-waste. So far, I've only reported on facts and no opinions. But now, let me address my feelings on this. The reality is, a physical Xbox disk is nothing more than a piece of plastic with a partial incomplete build that is likely only the Xbox One version due to size limitations. It must connect to Xbox Live to complete its install by downloading the remaining parts of the game and authenticate its license. Now many of you won't even see this as an issue. The common response I'll usually hear is that the platform holder will respect your game purchases and bring them forward with any new generation of the hardware. Now, while that may be true for the foreseeable future, the opposite is also true in that all digital stores will eventually disappear. We've seen it with the Wii Shop and the WiiWare. We've seen Sony delay the inevitable PS3 store closure, and we've also seen it with the original Xbox Live 1.0, and make no mistake, we will see it here. 
when I purchase a 25 year old game console, I can still play physical games on that hardware. Will I be able to do the same on Xbox Series X hardware in 25 years? I'm not so sure. But I want to hear your opinions in the comments below. How do you feel about the DRM measures on the Xbox Series X? A lot of people aren't even really concerned about it, and a lot of people are. And I want to know what you think about this, because this is a very polarizing topic. But for now, we are going to leave it here for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.